Hello everyone, I'm Soledad Muniz. I am the director of programs at Inside Share. Apologies, I cannot be there in person. And thanks, Nick, for facilitating the session for me. Um, I'm going to talk about, as the title of the presentation says, um, how to combine participatory video most significant change and specifically looking at the added value that um, having video stories of change creates in conversations through video screenings um, as a space for both um, um, selection panels of most significant change stories, as well as verification, uh, communication and uptake of learning. Inside Share is an organization, a non-for-profit organization, uh, experts on participatory media, and we have been working in participatory M&E um, using uh, participatory media alongside other methods uh, for many years. And uh, in 2015, we published our guide on how to combine participatory video most significant change um, with the uh, kind support and revision from Rick Davis uh, after many years of practice. So um, as part of the resources um, from this presentation, you can download that if you haven't heard of this before. Um, just for those who, ha who have uh, less experience on participatory video, I'm going to do a really quick um, introduction to uh, the combination of both methods and then focus on the key aspect of uh, the value of um, screening video stories of change. Um, so participatory video is a set of techniques uh, to involve a group or community in shaping and creating their own film. Um, and uh, it's a process, facilitated process. Um, while, as you all know, uh, most significant change involves the systematic collection of stories of change um, and the selection uh, by diverse stakeholders that are part of a project or a program. Now, what has been the value we've recognized throughout multiple projects and experiences across the world um, on using participatory video combined with most significant change? Here you have some examples from uh, partners and organizations that we have supported over the years. Um, for example, we worked with Population Council in Guatemala and uh, they found really, really interesting that um, in this process, you can be truly inclusive um, and generate better feedback with communities um, through um, unpacking all the learning, the, the adolescent girls that worked in doing the participatory m &E process with participatory video, most significant change, were able to uh, put grounded theory in practice and collect um, all the stories and then uh, review their um, programmatic indicators uh, with that process. Um, we've had also projects where uh, the um, evaluation or end of project evaluation became also a communication, community mobilization and advocacy process at the same time, um, supporting better exit as well as uh, sustainability of results. Um, this is an example with a project with Mercy Corps in Kenya and, and project participants who were part of the uh, local evaluation team trained on the method um, and having had the chance to listen to stories from uh, young people and community members, uh, really feeling that um, that learning could be quickly uptake in real time and used in their lives and taken to their community. So for example, um, this project participant highlighting how these stories uh, had helped her learn and understand better um, what are the young people are doing in terms of strip entrepreneurship uh, opportunities as well as um, how driven she was to kind of share this widely. Um, the key other aspect of many times unpacking learning that hasn't been exposed yet, even though people know each other for a really long time. So, um, for example, um, in a project we supported in an um, 
Global uh, Corporate Evaluation uh, from UN Women in Moldova, um, really working with women cooperatives that people knew each other for a long time, but through the uh, story circles and creation of video stories of change, they were able to understand um, things about each other that they never heard before, and they decided to incorporate it into their sessions. Um, key aspect is also um, allowing people to self-represent themselves in the way they want to tell a story and, um, and um, uh, creating a storyboard and uh, filming the stories themselves. Um, the, the data also is extremely interesting coming out of processes like this. For example, in this case, um, other methods didn't pick up certain uh, insights around uh, women's economic empowerment. And uh, this process was able to uh, bring in um, uh, angles of gender equality and human rights to ensure uh, views of excluded people were taken uh, into consideration in um, the final results of that evaluation. Um, so in a nutshell, the process really uh, entails people coming together, telling stories in a circle. So um, we don't do one-to-one -one, um, MSc interviews. We bring people in groups so they can listen to each other's stories and share the stories first verbally. And um, you can decide if to uh, write the stories down or uh, audio record them. And then they have a conversation on what is significant change and create their own criteria of significance um, and select a story as the story of most significant change from that story circle. And then they film it. Um, you can replicate this process with as many groups as you need in a particular monitoring and evaluation exercise. And then, uh, of course, with people's consent, um, you edit the stories, uh, re respecting absolutely every part of that story and not taking any creative liberties in the editing like you would do in the use of an audio recorded interview. Um, so the editing of the videos is around polishing or if there is uh, two or three takes of a scene um, or certain things that were filmed that people don't want, as well as maybe adding logos or adding some music that people selected to include in their, in their stories. When you've done that, then you can have the screening events and do further processes of selection of stories through uh, selection panels as well as doing at the end participatory analysis with a local team that has been carrying out this monitoring and evaluation exercise to unpack um, the learning together. So it has um, uh, a few characteristics and one is uh, accessibility and um, what we've seen and witnessed over the years is also um, becomes more meaningful and engaging for people because they take control not just of their narratives, but of the learning that comes out of an exercise like this to use it in their personal lives and um, avoid the process being extractive. Um, it stimulates a lot of constructive dialogue on the issues, uh, the screenings particularly, uh, where you expose the stories of change to multiple stakeholders and many times real time uptake of learning uh, by um, implementers or decision makers or partners. Uh, we've witnessed also that both the stories, uh, video stories, uh, as well as the screenings can uh, reveal unexpected results, both positive and, and negative, um, and uh, that also can lead into quick action, uh, as well as to further reflection on certain aspects of perhaps the theory of change or the um, way of approaching certain intervention and is really inclusive in terms of um, it remains accessible no matter age, language um, or literacy level. Um, so these are just some, um, some of the key aspects um, that you can um, um, make the most of. Uh, you can use it at any point in time in the m and &E uh, cycle, really. Uh, the key aspects is that 
any organization using this process has to be willing to definitely listen to the expressions and opinions of people uh, because it's a two-way communication tool and um, have some commitment to inform uh, ongoing or future programs with it. So in that sense, is a really useful process in terms of being uh, at the same time an accountability many times to affected populations and, and community groups that you're working with. Um, of course, not uh, being happy to hear both positive and negative um, results and um, being flexible and responsive in terms of um, shifting circumstance and needs from, from the participants. Um, the editorial control is fully on, on storytellers, um, which means that you cannot decide to delete parts of a, of a, of a, um, of a video because uh, you don't like it or you disagree with it, but you can treat it as data and, and then have conversations with people on how you're going to use the stories based on their consent and based on your own aims. Um, but I suppose in that sense, that share with, with, with ethical use of, of data, um, in, in other forms, it's just video exposes much more the data to be widely shared when people give consent for that. Um, so it's really important to have the diverse stakeholders of a project or a program in the selection screenings. And that's really in our experience, what it guarantees really part the, the, the m and &E exercise to really be participatory. So then you have a chance to hear from all stakeholders in a, in a, in a particular project or program. And, um, and then use that learning immediately for making further decisions. Um, so the, in a nutshell, the, the process has a design phase where you will identify the purpose of doing this. Um, ideally, you will select a local team to carry out the process uh, um, that could be a combination of um, local implementers or evaluators as well as community members. We really encourage community members to be a crucial part of the uh, facilitation team and define the questions and the groups that you are going to involve uh, in storytelling. This is what looks like a, a diverse um, a local evaluation team with diverse implementers, community members, and uh, facilitators. And then you would carry out the story circles in as many locations as you need. Uh, and as I said, they will select the stories and they will film them themselves. Um, and after you do that, they will discuss consent, how these stories can be used. Do they uh, need to be only used in screenings face to face? People want them to be used for wider advocacy or dissemination as well. Um, and uh, you would do the revision of those uh, stories, the content and the finalizing them through um, basic post-production and then set up all the screening events that you need. Um, and as I said, these can be face-to-face um, -face in location with community groups that have participated in storytelling as well as the diverse decision makers, um, which they will work in small groups to uh, select the stories of most significant change um, as selection panels and share their insights. Many times screenings can also be used as action plan opportunities after selection of stories uh, for communities to design what's next on a project. Um, and, and then we encourage people to also do participatory analysis, as I said at the beginning, even though, of course, as an evaluator or as an um, organization, you can do further um, secondary data analysis yourself or your data analyst. But we encourage people to do this collectively uh, in a workshop uh, to challenge each other's assumptions and understanding of the data and contextualize um, that understanding better and uh, come up with key conclusions and uh, recommendations many times, depending on if this is an um, ongoing monitoring exercise or if it's a midterm review or an annual evaluation. Um, we encourage that group, that local evaluation team, to also record these recommendations in a video that we call a video report. And so that can be also widely shared 
alongside the written report or other resources. And then if people gave consent, uh, some of the stories can also become, um, uh, you know, um, wider dissemination um, products uh, for um, any other audiences that uh, you want to reach if people have given you the consent. Um, so that's in a nutshell what the whole process looks like. So now I would like you to watch an example of a process that we've finalized uh, recently supporting um, an organization in Kenya, Rural Women Peace Link, do an impact evaluation um, one year after they finished the project that it was fully led by community members that were trained on the method and they um, went around listening and collecting stories of change in their communities as well as facilitating the screenings themselves um, to have a conversation on what has been the impact of the project as well as what was next in their journey of um, peace building and community-led development. So um, I'm going to uh, now include here uh, the file of the video. So you are going to watch this. And then after that, um, I'll share the key um, final conclusions and next steps for you to work together. Nakumbuka mwaka wa 208 tulikuwa na, na furukishano hapa Uruma tukawa na ID, IDP camp hapo nyuma ya hospitali watu hawangeweza kwenda kuchukua dawa madaktari hawangeweza hawangeweza kuja kazini Huruma tuliadhirika vibaya sana kwa sababu hatungeweza kutoka nje bado watu walikuwa na ile tension ya kusema pengine tena kitaumana kama wakati ule Ulikuwa nasikia mtu anasema, he, mimi sita ngocha tena. Mtu anachukua watoto wake, wiki mbili kabla ya election, anaama anaenda kwao, kura sikipiwa sikiisha, anarudi sena. Uh, 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 D-block, pale kulikuwa na, 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 na mambo mengi sana sana. Kulikuwa na, 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 na nafunza, that's jigas, zilikuwa nyingi sana pale. Mimi pia katika ile lilikuwa nimeishi pale diblo kidogo pale. Hizo dudu zilikuwa zimaaye nyuma. So by mimi kuvolunteer nilitaka kuvolunteer kwa sababu ya mambo kama hayo ya dudu. Nimeza how can we eradicate these uh, uh, jigas menace? Ni maisha yangu ikaanza kudidimia kwa sababu tulikuwa na hali ngumu sana ya wakati huo. Nikaanza ku strange kwa wakati huo kwa sababu niliishi na ikatokea na hata katika hiyo harakati ya mafundisho na peace link women peace link tukaanza majadiliano kwa hiyo majadiliano ambayo tumekuwa tukipitia tumepata kusaidiwa hapa huruma tumesaidia watoto wenye wanaishi na HIV na wazazi wao wamepata school fees e, wa mama wamepata soko Boda boda, wako na usalama wanaweza kuoperate hata usiku. Wale mavu wamekuwa wakipimo hapa huruma siku hizi wana, wanasaidiwa kupitia kwa hiyo mradi yenye tulikuwa tunakaa tukisaidiana, tukijadiliana. Hii uh, peace link iweza kuleta amani tumeshikana vizuri. Tulikuja tukauliziwa maneno ya shida zetu zenye tuko nazo tukasema hatuna barabara na ukweli hatukuwa na barabara. Barabara ilikuwa mbaya sana. Hapa hakukuwa na sima akukuwa na njia hata tulikuwa tukifanya biashara kufikisha vitu saka hapo kuja kuuza ilikuwa shida lakini wakati tuliulizwa mimi kama mwana community nahitaji kufanya nini tukasema sisi ni kuchukua hatua tukaelekezwa tuchukua hatua tuweze kuongeresha kama ni MCA ama ni chief ama kanisa ili tuweze kushirikiana na tukafuata hiyo huo mtindo saa hii mkiona tuko na stima tuko na barabara kwa sababu tulipendana na tukakubali kukaa pamoja tukiwa watu mtu mmoja biashara zinaendelea vizuri 
mkale nzini atauza maziwa tukaona tunasonga mbele tumetambulika na wakubwa na tunaendelea na hata kila jambo tunalo taka kufanya ama wanataka kufanya lazima watuhusishe hata nasi tukafurahi tuka kwa sababu ya amani tulio nayo na upendo na ushirikiano ila ambao tunaendelea nayo uh, the women peace league iliweza kusaidia sana ku kutoa watu katika mashida mbili tatu nne kama hayo stima bado tulilia manna stima Shh. wakaenda wakatutengenezea stima tumepata de block barabara hizo naza zikatengenezwa kwa na hiyo hiyo infrastructure problem whatever sasa kawa tukawa kuna uwepesi sasa watu kwenda kufika kutoka mashinani kwenda mjini barabara ziko ziko sawa hospitali watu kwenda kufika katika mahospitali watu wako sawa so you find that uh, in fact uh, iliweza kutusaidia sana kwa kuweza kuishi kukaa pamoja na hawa na kuweza kutuelekeza shida zetu mingi sana kweli kabisa wametusaidia na mimi nashukuru sana kwa hiyo muda ambayo tumekuwa nao kwa hao kuweza kutusaidia kwa kuweza kutuonesha kwenda mbele The key aspects I would like you to think about are how we use um, screenings and see if you have had that opportunity either using participatory video or other um, uh, processes alongside your most significant change practice. Um, and as I said, we focus on four key things in the screenings. One is, is a selection panel opportunity where people discuss what significant changes they come up with their own criteria to select change and you record that criteria. The second aspect is verification of data. So the screenings allow for people to come together, discuss uh, what the stories are and if there are uh, certain uh, stories or information that are not uh, real. Um, so you have that opportunity. Uh, the third thing is people having the chance to share learning uh, so immediately learning from each other and then using that learning in their own lives or for um, key actors in a project or program, uh, funders to also use that data uh, immediately in decision making rather than waiting for a written report. Um, and the other key thing also is communication, advocacy and accountability. So it's a chance to communicate widely about the issues uh, with diverse stakeholders. Many times is making commitments uh, through an advocacy effort, depending who you have in the room on decision makers to um, uh, hold them accountable to create certain changes either on policy or implementation of policy. Um, so it's also a chance to, uh, to do that at the same time as sharing learning and capturing uh, more data. Um, so I would love you to have this conversation now in the time left of the session that will be facilitated by Nick, where you can discuss these five questions. First is, how have you used selection panel discussion in the past? Um, how have you go about verifying data in the most significant change stories? And how have you shared learning across project program stakeholders after you finalize capturing stories and, and doing the selection? Um, of those stories, um, how have you communicated results and with who, uh, with which stakeholders, as well as um, how have you used the stories of change in wider dissemination or advocacy opportunities um, that uh, may have arised in your particular work. So if you can uh, work on at your whiteboard there, the idea is that you can capture in the whiteboard your thoughts on those five key points. And you can also have a section where um, you park questions uh, from my presentation. And if you can email it to me at the email here, I will more than happy answer those questions. So then the organizers, when they share the recording of this uh, session and resources, I can also share in that same process uh, answers and comments to your group discussion. Thank you very much.